Hey there gamers, gonna be blazing through some content here starting with some Marvel Snap. Uh, it's kind of a clash of Hearthstone meets Artifact meets Poker, I don't know. It's a card game where you're playing through six turns and just to quick give a quick overview, we're looking at three locations uh, in an example game. You basically play in like the left, the middle, or the right position, and then it adds up all the damage at the end, and whoever's winning two of the three positions um, is going to be winning the game. Um, if there's a tie, then it just goes for the total. Um, you generally just play somewhere around maybe six to eight cards. More Definitely can be more or less, but um, oftentimes it's just one card a turn. Um, as each turn you get one mana, two mana, three subsequently. Unless there's some mana mechanics, like I've got a card that gives me plus one energy for a turn. I've got a card that um, reduces costs, stuff like that. Um, now each location that you play at is randomized based off of a pool of different uh, battlefields that have different effects. Like for example this one you can't play after turn four so you would want to put some early cards here so that you have some advantage unless you have some other way of like summoning them in after. There's like play cards you play and there, there's cards that can play at other locations from one location. Um, then there's, yeah, so there's like limiting factors here where you can't even summon things here. Um, and the card text is like pretty specific once you kind of play around with it a bit. In this case, this is like a fog of war. You actually don't see all three locations at once. Turn one, you see, at the beginning of turn one, you see this location. Turn two, this one. Turn three, this one. And um, th the effect doesn't apply until it's shown. But it can be good or bad. Um, most of them, I would say, are slightly positive, like you want to be there. But... Um, there can be definitely be some negative ones that um, kind of RNG you a bit, but yeah, overall, um, this is going to be just a, a little bit of gameplay here at the infinite level. Um, last thing I guess I should mention is this snap cube. Basically, um, there's a way to double down um, in the matchmaking system right now. Right now, uh, you can see here, 3 out of 10. Basically, I'm at like 108, my rank is like 108.3, um, and every 10 cubes you go up or 10 cubes you go down. And uh, the way you get these cubes is one you get one per win if the opponent retreats before turn six without a snap being played. But at turn six, it doubles to, um, you see like this next turn, it'll go to next turn two. If everybody plays turn six without a snap, then the, the game is worth two points instead of one. Um, but much more often, at least one of the two players will snap, which is like a raise in poker where um, you're saying we're gonna keep if we're gonna keep playing. I'm it's gonna be worth a lot more to me So if you're in a winning position or think you could be in a winning position, it's often advantageous to snap and that would allow you to um, Rake in the points usually try to get uh, Four to eight points at a game, but more often you'll see like two points and somebody retreats on turn six um, Anyways, yeah, that's the basic gist of it. Um, we'll just kind of get into it after we look at the deck I'll be playing for this time around. Uh, experimented with a lot of different stuff. I uh, were able, was able to get some of the newer cards or the higher tier whatever unlocks and uh, put them together to a deck that I'm kind of into. This is similar to the deck that I first hit in, in a col uh, collection pool 2, series 2, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, going along those lines, uh, I get basic kit is Sunspot who likes it when you don't use all your mana. You have Armor who protects him because there are cards that can reduce, destroy one cost cards in particular. Um, then there's uh, the Infinite, which is a card that you're going to want to play on your last turn, but it means you can't play anything on turn five. There are other times where this will come out, but almost always it's going to be on turn six. And the goal of this deck is to try to play this new card that I got, She-Hulk, alongside it, uh, basically reducing the cost of she-Hulk based on energy mana you didn't spend again synergizes with Sunspot where he wants gets but he gets powered up if you don't spend mana the or energy what are, the words interchangeable for my vocabulary at least and then um she is more cost effective or might get you get more value out of her if you didn't spend mana the previous turn and then um to play the infinite generally you can't play anything on turn five at all so you're wasting all five or six mana there um, by playing, usually She-Hulk would be discounted by five, and then you don't have six mana to play on turn the last turn. But because of the Psylocke card, you can play this on turn four, and then pass on turn five, and then play She-Hulk and Infinite, 
Uh, that's why I call it 30, is because you can do 30 damage on turn 6. There's other ways to cheese out the, the card. This She, Jubilee, plays like a random card. Often it'll just be like um, America Chavez, who's going to always be in the deck in, for the first 5 turns. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a couple other things. Um, this is kind of piggybacking off of a deck that I had some success with, where I combined Arrow and She-Hulk. And basically you could wait until turn 6 um, and use this to manipulate your, the, the position of your enemy's last turn play, and She-Hulk would kind of bring the brute force to try to win a position. Uh, there's other cards that, again, discount co uh, costs and, and factor in. Um, then there's just cards that are just kind of cheap value damage to kind of force the enemy to play things on the board. Odin is kind of weird. He doubles down on any activations. If you play him next to Jubilee, for example, she'll summon a random card in your deck it might be odin and then when he reveals himself she'll activate again uh this is true as well for wave um doubling her effect where a different usually it's like turn three she makes everything cost four including your enemies cards which can be important if they're like swarming down a bunch of stuff and then you owed it you can odin it because he doesn't cost six he actually costs four in that context and yeah you'll see but in that since, yeah, you're activating these real effects twice. You can also mess with uh, Arrow and Arrow Odin, and if they don't play too many cards, then you're going to be able to kind of force all his cards into one lane, letting your cheaper cards like Lizard or whoever, uh, maybe Sunspot, win the, the former lanes. Magneto's a late addition. He's mostly just here for the 12 damage, but he also has a nice little effect uh, that can come into play sometimes. Honestly, he's only there. He's only here because I'm running Jubilee. Um, otherwise, I, I don't actually see myself putting this card on the battlefield. But better than a 2-drop in my mind, but again, I'm still playing around with it. Anyways, we're going to just go into some random matchmaking here. It matches, um, I think rank is a bit of a factor, but more so it's how many cards you've unlocked. Um, making it a, a key decider where you don't want to be, they don't want you to play against people who have literally the full set unlocked and you only have half of it or whatever. Um, anyways, um, here we are, turn 1. Um, one mana, as you can see down here, and yeah, turn one out of six. So we're going to go ahead and play our one mana, uh, dropping Sunspot in the middle lane here. We don't know what this location is, but I feel pretty comfortable playing into the fog. I can adapt to what it throws at me for the most part. There's a couple locations you can't play around into, but there's just as many locations that you'll wish you had played when it was not revealed, because it'll be like, there's literally one where you can't play any cards into it. So either you have to move cards in, summon cards in, or have already played there before it kind of came into play. So, so far we've just got Avengers Compound and the Hub, which will be just giving us, spitting out random cards. So he has six cards in his hand, six cards in his deck. The decks are very small. Like you saw, that was my full list of 12 cards. So it's pretty, you're going to see, by the time you get to the last turn, you're going to be seeing um, three quarters of your deck guaranteed so that sometimes you'll have like the infinite at the bottom and that's not great but like for the most part um it's pretty clean so now we see event this uh, mirror dimension revealed it's going to be avengers compound times two so basically next turn either of these locations will be a valid uh place to drop this if i'm so i'm in a position where i really want to play psylocke on turn four if i draw infinite but i only have one more chance to draw him since i don't draw him on turn six for other reasons um, so I'm probably just not going to rely on it, um, and I'm probably just going to go into, like, some Arrow, She-Hulk kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and start things off here by putting some hurt on the right side, since I can't play here next turn, I might as well at least see what I can get damage-wise. Might be Infinite, for example. And it's just going to be a Lizard, which is, you know, meh, but not a big deal. It's perfectly fine amount of damage for, like, four mana put in. All right. Um, I think at this position, if he's not passing twice, I could, in theory, arrow and then Odin. The reason I don't want to do that is because um, he has Dracula and Sunspot, which will accrue damage, if he, even if he doesn't play anything. So he plays Captain Marvel, who can kind of be in any one of these three spots. Not all of them at once, but she'll move to wherever she's needed. Now we've had the chance to play She-Hulk plus one. It's going to be the five mana cards. It's going to be arrow. So the question is... Where do we not want cards? I'm playing first before his activate. He wants Lockjaw to play have cards in play, so I don't want them there. I'm going to instead play She-Hulk here. I'm going to play 
arrow over here and we'll see what happens. Not going to snap, not feeling super confident about this, but this is a good showcase of like how things play. I have this little glow around my name, which is why I know that I'm going to be playing first on this turn. I don't know the order of it, if it's like turn one, three, five, I go first because I've, I've seen the inconsistency. It might just be a f like randomized each turn. I'm not sure. Either way, Dracula is going to have an effect. He obviously is not a zero damage card. He's going to be putting some damage in at the end of the game. First, but we stop the Lockjaw thing, which is cool. Um, he's going to be summoning in five, some Doom Bots. He's going to be discarding this card for nine damage, and then Marvel moves to the side. So she, this is basically why I didn't feel too super confident, because there's lots of ways this can kind of shake out at the very end. There's a lot of unpredictability in what he ends up playing. He plays his, this is his strongest card, his six mana card. Summons, um, it's like the Hearthstone Dr. Seven, um, Dr. Boom, and ends up summoning one guy to each lane. If he had played it here, then it would have also been Lockjawed and then swapped with another card that was sitting in his deck, um, which could have been even stronger. Um, but as it stood, he got kind of lucky having four cards in hand and he gets the, the nine damage one from Dracula. If this was six damage or less, if he discarded anything that was six damage or less, then he wouldn't have been able to win because um, I would have been winning at middle and Captain Marvel would have had to stay there and wouldn't have been able to jump to the left freely. Um, but he got a little lucky, not a big deal. Four cubes down the drain and we'll see how the next game goes. All right. So the games are fairly quick, especially if I'm not talking and wait, delaying things a lot. I'm gonna try to play Arrow over here because she can straight up kill people with it. So um, we'll put pressure on the right side of the board and make them want to play there, and then we'll see what happens. Sunspot's always at risk if he's not under the effect of armor um, because, well, yeah, there's a couple cards in the game that will just straight up kill him, and they're not un they're not that unpopular. Electra I haven't seen in a while, but there's a guy, Killmonger, that is common in every like destroy archetype there is out there. Unfortunately, I don't get anything to play here. Worst case, I can play She-Hulk next turn um, for one mana and hopefully get like a two drop on top of that. But he's actually a, a movement deck himself, which is pretty interesting. This hurts his position quite a bit if that's the case. Now I have wave. I could do the, the whole double wave thing with wave o Odin, and that would be perfectly fine. Um could do the Jubilee and then Odin on the last turn as well. There's a lot of ways I could look at this. The biggest thing though is I want to try to get that Psylocke combo I was talking about. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't have Arrow in hand, otherwise I would be ignoring Fisk. Um, but yeah, as it is, he's going to be sending Vulture over here with like bonus damage. He's just got, basically just got a really beefy card here in Vulture. And he's going to use Doctor Strange to bring it back to the right in a turn or two. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to be summoning out Arrow, who pulls him in, and because of Fist Tower, he gets absolutely destroyed. Not a big deal since he only does two damage, but whatever. Uh, that puts us in a position to close things out here. I'm going to go ahead and Magneto he, um, this three drop into Fist Tower here in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a Wave in middle. I'm going to snap with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to She-Hulk Magneto. Because Wave... Oh, he's gone. Uh, so he leaves. I get one free cube. It's not much for the four turns put in, but it's okay. What I was saying is that basically I can turn Magneto and She-Hulk into four mana cost with Wave. And then because I didn't spend two of my mana on turn five, only playing a three mana card, She-Hulk gets discounted an extra two. So she costs two. Magneto costs four. That's six mana. And then Magneto does his move thingy, which would kill somebody at Fisk Tower while She-Hulk gets to take Atlantis and be 15 damage. So, pretty good combo. Um, would kill off the, the Vulture there, and unless there's a way he like predicted it and prevented uh, its death with one of two cards. So, I, I would say unlikely, since it doesn't fit the deck that he was running. Anyways, he didn't feel great. He d obviously was planning to retreat as soon as you snap. Um, I, I didn't really cover retreat, but basically it means that uh, let's see, well, um, basically it means that 
you can leave the game at any point, and if you see a snap, you want to make a decision. Are you going to stick around and go for the double down, or are you going to, you know, uh, just cut your losses? And uh, I think the math, the math of it is interesting, because I thought about it. Basically, it's not just like a 50-50, I'm winning or I'm losing. Like, if I only have like a 40% chance to win the game, it's actually still fine to go ahead and play it out instead of retreating because you get a guaranteed loss versus a 40% chance to win. Anyways, um, that's a little bit too complex for this. I could storm on left side. He's also got goose here, which is super annoying um, because if there's a, what can happen on here is if I play storm on left, I haven't covered storm obviously, but if I play storm here, it can be mirrored here and then with Goose in this position, I might not be able to play any high damage cards later on. So it's kind of risky to play uh, Storm there. Because I wanted to copy Daily Bugle and not that, but you never know. Anywho. I could just do this, since I'm not planning on playing here anyways. Kind of okay with that. And he does the same thing. So, not a big deal. Um... But I guess it does create the same situation where Mirror Dimension could flood, and now I literally can't play on turn 6, which is the, the turn that I'm the strongest. So I can mess with this a bit by playing a Jubilee, not here because of Goose, but I don't know how this actually pans out. We'll go ahead and play Jubilee. Um, not that many good cards. The biggest one would be uh, Chavez. Mega Chavez 9 damage instead of get Psylocke, which... Would be great if this wasn't the vault. Clo this closes next turn, so really not much. So I can no longer play this turn. Mirror is kind of weird to actually play it here. So I can go ahead and mirror this, and we'll see what happens with it. Um, the problem is, though, if he plays a good enough card, if he can beat 9 damage here, then I can lose that. So arrow is the safer play, where it prevents you know, stuff from getting screwed over by pulling things out of there and auto-winning left. But this is going to be the kind of bigger play. If I can pull Chavez, um, it's good. I'm trying to remember what other cards are in this deck. Oh, Magneto's great. Um, and probably already like pulls one of these guys from over here. So he does the Forge thing. He gets Killmonger. It kills this guy. That's one of the ways that uh, Sunspot can die. And I probably should have seen that coming because he had Nova. But he didn't snap, so like I, I can still retreat with all this new information without much concern. Um, and I'm going to have to because he guaranteed has one left and middle and I'm lost right. So we'll go ahead and do this. If he had snapped earlier, then he would have gotten an extra, an extra cube for that play, but which he definitely should have. But I'll for that for a drop of one cube, not a big deal. Yeah, I think the, I'm never going to be really snapping on turn five or six. It's really going to be trying to snap at turn four and kind of knowing at that point how the game is shaping up based on what I've seen from these decks before. And oh, ten, seven turn game. So we get seven a seven mana turn after the six mana turn, um, which means that I don't necessarily need to play Psylocke at all. Um, I can just do like wave stuff for a good chunk of the game and still do on turn seven, She-Hulk, Infinite, assuming there's space. You can only play a max of four cards per location, which is a limiting factor as well. Okay, um, I don't really necessarily know how to adapt around the extra mana here, because Wave is still, like, feels like the better play compared to most of my options. I'm, I'm going to get She-Hulk for basically free if I play it smart, so, um, either I Wave this turn, I Wave next turn, I'm not sure what the difference really is. Um, let's go ahead and get this out, and then I might be able to arrow next turn instead. We'll see what he does. He probably has a movement deck already. No, he's brood. Okay. So he's running a Silver Surfer buff brood deck. It's pretty strong. Um, what he has going on here, I'll outline in a second. But I probably want to try to get like a wave, a double wave in. I don't think it's going to really matter a lot of what I have to play right now. We can mess with him with Magneto a bit. Let's try that and see if we can get the Magneto draw, or at least Chavez. Yeah, he's trying to flood middle. And we get Odin, which will then pull another card, which is probably the best card we could have gotten, 
and Magneto. Okay, so we're in business now. Um, can't really predict that kind of RNG, so that's where I wouldn't snap on that turn four and would have to just snap after the fact. But assuming he doesn't retreat, I feel like I'm in a good spot. He's full up here. He can buff them with a couple cards, but nah, it's good. Um, and then there's still two more turns to play, so what I can do is either arrow or just wave and slow down his card play. Hmm. So, in some ways, Arrow might help him if he's running like Iron Man or something. I'm okay right now, as things are. I'm gonna go ahead and armor this in case he has Killmonger, because he does. He's running a lot of three mana cards. This is what his deck does. Silver Surfer likes three mana cards, so this is probably Killmonger. I'll prevent it from activating, and we'll go about our business. Echo Iron Man. Oh, Sarah. Okay. So this discounts all his cards, so everything's pretty cheap. He's gonna basically be able to play his whole hand. Um, which can be pretty good, um, obviously. It's turn six. I'm going to pass here, and I'm going to She-Hulk him, but not last turn, and we'll see what happens with it. Uh, Arrow doesn't really do that much, like changing the position. They're going to, no matter where he plays stuff, it's going to be pretty strong. But yeah, Brood um, is pretty strong because he just triples himself. He like makes two copies, and the two copies benefit from stuff like Washington, D.C., um, which he's just destroyed. So he's running Surfer, but he's not running uh, Patriot stuff. And Hugh, um, yeah, he's gone. So I get two dice out of that, which is, or cubes, whatever you call them. Um, and yeah, he probably knew he's, he can't win right side, and he's going to take 30 damage on one of these two lanes. Uh, he might not know that specifically, but gets the idea he's not in a winning position, so. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so the overall thing I've been trying to think of like is like, kind of calculating win probability dynamic throughout each round and deciding at what point I want to try to snap. Vormir is kind of a new location, I haven't played with it that much. Sometimes you just want to like feed something to it so that you can play there later, because it's only one time per game that it actually blocks something. In this case, he has already um, sacrificed the hood, which is a negative two damage card, so it's perfectly fine to get rid of. It's actually advantage advantageous to do so. I don't think I'll be playing that, thank you very much, but I could play like Psylocke here and get the value out of the reveal effect, but still, yeah, get the Vormir stuff out of the way. I think I'm going to chill for right now, because again, if I draw Infinite, I want to Psylocke on turn 4 with another, like, another 2 mana card. He reduces my attack power. Baxter is going to be the point of focus though, that's like... Pretty guaranteed. Um, I don't know if this is a good thing. This would, if I played this, I get two damage on the board, but he gets a way to. It, it makes my Psylocke more expensive, and it gives him like a free six drop, basically. Not a free, but a, ch uh, a discounted six drop. So I'm actually gonna unfortunately play nothing here and hope that Sunspot is, damage is gonna carry me a bit. And he's looking like a Galactus deck, um, is what I'm seeing right now. Curious how I can circumvent that a bit. Um. If I do, yeah, Vormir and Armor here, that'll at least put me at zero. But if he's able to wave out something, I gotta watch out. Let's see, nothing wave. Okay. Yeah, goblins are generally gonna be in a car with a deck called Galactus, and it's gonna be making it so that only one location on the board matters. But we're, we're net neutral here, we're not doing too bad. We're gonna go ahead, we don't have Infinite and we're drawing Chavez next turn. So we can either discount She-Hulk, get the Sun, yeah, we're just gonna do that because we can get the full value out of She-Hulk and then play whatever we want next turn. In this case, Hobgoblin's over there, so he's definitely getting Baxter building. There's very little I can do about that. Um, and I can just kind of emphasize the left two lanes. The problem, though, is I think he's just going to Galactus, right? He's just going to play this three damage thing and see what happens with it. And I have to play this in order to prevent that. So I'm going to go ahead, um, play this, killing off my Sunspot, and then hope it's enough and hope I'm countering a Galactus. Uh, we'll see, though. Um, you'll see if it works. Actually, looks pretty cool. Um, that's after his stuff. A anything else? Just double checking, I actually planned this out right. 
Yeah, because if it was my turn first, I would actually probably Magneto his stuff in, which messes with Galactus, but whatever. Let's see what he gets. Oh, it's not Galactus. Okay. That's a surprise. Because we're going to kill off our Sunspot, but it looks like we win anyways. I don't really know what his game plan was. It's a bit perplexing. I assumed it was this one very niche archetype, but it wasn't even that. It's just a, kind of a random group of cards. Oh well, not a big deal. Two dice, we'll take it. And that's just for playing through to turn six. Nobody snapped on that. I'll just probably only end up playing about five more games and then switch over to something else, but yeah, it's kind of nice to be in, do some introductory content towards this game that I've been fiending a little bit. Mo mostly the first, like, two weeks that I played it, I played the most, and then I've kind of just been doing quests and stuff since then, but yeah, no, it's, it's pretty good. I like the dynamic aspect of the locations, um, and just like the little mind games that can happen if you play more, some of the more technical cards. Um, yeah, it reminds me of a lot of the stuff from other games that I enjoyed, so. Um, he's got a destroy deck because this guy wants to die, so he's going to be playing cards like Carnage, Venom, Death, uh, the guy called Death Spot, I think, um, stuff like that. I could play, I'm just going to go ahead and play Psylocke here. She turns into the Incredible Hulk because of Gamma Lab, so I'm down with that. He's going to be up one Hulk, unfortunately, but otherwise this is a pretty good situation for me. Um, the, the main thing now is I just have to think about how I want to play... Why do I have plus one mana? Oh, because Psylocke, okay. So I can play here, but I don't know if that really makes sense. I think what I want to be doing... I guess I would waste the mana if I didn't play this. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure. If I'm playing Infidot next turn, then I want to... I'm going to try this. What's he? He's playing a four mana card, so it's probably not that strong. And now I'm getting the benefit over here. So he's, yeah, he's killing off this guy, buffing all these guys. And I'm pu pulling out a mojo, which you usually want to stack a lot of cards in mojo. So he's up by 15 in middle. I can counteract that with infinite if I don't play anything this turn, but kind of feels a little weak. Instead, I could go ahead and Jubilee Odin, and I think that that'll at least create some value here. Um, it's going to be bringing in probably like a lizard or something weak, but here's hoping. I could also pull something out with Deathlock instead. So actually, I can, I'm considering that now. I could use uh, Magneto to pull Deathlock or Enchantress out from that location. I think I'm pretty happy with whatever it hits here. It's not for the 12 damage, it's actually just for the drag, where I'm pulling something out of Atlantis or I'm pulling something out of Mojo World, which should guarantee me one of the two. The problem is it's kind of a coin flip. Whichever one doesn't get pulled, he could still win that lane pretty convincingly. So, hmm. I don't know. I mean, that it's that or Odin Arrow, which pulls something over to the left and guarantees me the win. Okay, never mind. That's obviously a better play. Um, this should work. Three cards in hand. He, ha if I, I'm, I'm winning by two damage right now. So unless he has a ten damage card that he's putting down, I'm gonna be happy to see this work. Let's go ahead for it. Snap it up. See what happens. Yeah. So there's like so many different ways you can kind of manipulate the board once you get the deeper into the card pool. The basic stuff doesn't really count, but and we get a free one cube. I'll take a guaranteed one over like a. I don't know, 65% chance of getting four. Really comes down to what he ends up playing. <sighs> so yeah, I don't really keep well enough track to know if I'm like winning or losing most of these games because it really comes down to the net dice value. Like, 
if you get an eight point win, it's so much more significant than a one point win. It's not even worth comparing, to be honest. Like, I see some people being like, "Oh, this deck list goes seventy thirty, but it's like, but how confident can you be going into turn six? And uh, how co how obvious is that play to your opponent? Because you want to make it so that they don't know what's up your sleeve until you get closer to the end. And that way you can get more than just the one cube where people just retreat on turn five. Um, so we're playing Psylocke next turn. Um, we're just going to save mana because it helps on spot. And then we can probably play Infinite or She-Hulk on left and she can get the Atlantis buff later. So we're thinking a few turns ahead at this point, but yeah, there's no reason not to. This guy's running a discard deck, which does have some risk involved. If Whoa, okay. That's more than you usually see, right? Or no, I'm just I'm not thinking straight. Anyways, um, yeah, this is chill. We can just go ahead and play Psylocke here. Stab, because it's pretty clean to get 30. The only thing is if we can discard a card, or if we can get a card called Hela in play, she resurrects any discarded card and Ghost Rider can do something similar so between the two of them that's a pretty good combo but yeah he's gone I get two dice Victory. it's very interesting he doesn't play anything I don't play anything but he hit and like he was accepting the snap by hitting end turn and yet he just loses the dice the next like I don't know what more info he got out of that that he's like okay now I want to retreat but I'll take the free dice Yeah, that's the element that I feel like I'm the least familiar with is the the snap kind of side, the little poker element of like when do you raise, when do you fold. Um, it's interesting because there's basically like the flop, the turn, the river, um, the structure that you see in like Texas Hold'em. And I think that's an easy aspect to overlook. Everyone would be like, oh, this this card, this guy won, but the number that you get out of it is actually varies so heavily. Uh, I like I really like armor here because it protects both the one mana card and the high damage card. There's a guy called Shang Chi that just nukes heavy, heavy cards. New York gives some options in terms of positioning. Um, that should be interesting as the game goes on. Now we get back to this question of do I want to wave for three damage if I'm just going to Psylock next turn? And I've thought about this a decent bit because I, I just don't know exactly what the best answer is. Um, it really comes down to what he's playing. All I've seen from his deck is Iceman. I know he didn't play anything on turn two. That might mean he's getting greedy, and this greed might help him. I don't really know. I'm just gonna... I'm, uh, the one thing is, I save the mana, right? If, if Sunspot wasn't on the field, I think I'd play her. Um, but Sunspot is on the field, so I'm just gonna let him eat up the, the damage, and he gets three damage anyways. So, here we are, playing Psylocke on turn four. And that only makes sense if we get... She-Hulk in the last turn, and we have a one, we have a one in four chance of that because Chavez is on six. I don't know. Mm, I kind of annoyed that Jubilee got hit by Iceman because that would have been a nice card to play right here. Jubilee would have been clean this turn. So we're in the spot where it's like, do we want to wave Odin? Does that help us? I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's another pass, unfortunately, but. It's, it feels really awkward to do it. I mean, if I'm going to pass, I might as well Psylocke. And it kind of just comes down to RNG what happens with the last turn. Um, Thor is pretty good. So that you can tell he's kind of a battle cry or deck or on reveal deck because he's got Ironheart. Not necessarily Iceman. Iceman's like everywhere, but Ironheart is specific to like Odin decks, and Thor fits into that really well. Um. So yeah, now we know our f turn five draw, and the question is, what do we do with that information? Do we... Do we play anything? Do we just try to win left? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly, it's boring, but like, it actually feels the cleanest to do something like this, where I just, I pass, I get f six free damage on Sunspot, and then I play 20 damage on left. And Thor can power up, but usually only once with Mjolnir, so it should be chill. Yeah, he, she pulls Mjolnir for him. I get buffed up. The only trick now is 
do I just burn bring everything over? And I think I do because he's already got a card there, uh, Ironheart, and that's not going to help him very much. Um, so yeah, we'll just bring everything over. Um, the the armor will go with, and then we'll win left, presumably, unless he oh, he could do he could do double right. He can do Mjolnir and then Odin. Never mind. I'm probably screwed. What's it? Plus six. Eh, should be okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Cause it, unless he gets plus fourteen or something, and he starts off with four. So yeah, maximum damage of eighteen. He does get the proc, but like, I'm twenty damage. So see you later. And here, look here, eight cubes. Like, it's so hard to get kind of hyped up about the one cube retreats when you can suddenly eight x that. Um, one turn later, and now I'm up to 109.4 in terms of ranking. Um, not sure what the top end is. Um, I think I hit like 114 in the the lower card pool with all with the less cool stuff unlocked. People acted like that was kind of like training wheels, so I can't really say if it was good or not. But yeah, now this is kind of around the highest I've been in this higher pool. Yeah, it feels good. Do, 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 do. We do not want to put Lizard here. He gets debuffed twice by it, so we're just going to drop it over here. Yeah, Lizard has like a drawback built into him where if he's up against a full board, then he only does two damage. And he's actually negative one if he's at Citadel. Um, this is interesting. This central park kind of floods the board, it, which can be very advantageous for some decks. Um, the destroy decks that want to like eat cards, like Bucky, they they'll like the squirrels. There's buff decks that'll like zoo out a bunch of stuff and then um, power it all up. Ooh, this could be dangerous. This Moon Knight discards my Psylocke, so I do not get Psylocke this game, which means I can't She-Hulk Infinite on my last turn. So I think She-Hulk now is definitely my best play. Um, and the question becomes, where do I want her? Um, she's technically a three cost card right now, so. I guess it's going to be left. He's already going to be playing pretty heavily into right. And I don't see him really using any ongoing cards for the set at all. Yeah, this can be a, just a dramatic effect if you have the right cards. There's cards called ongoing um, as a keyword that will just do some absurd amounts of damage. Um, he's What he's doing is he's discarding this Apocalypse card. It goes right back to his hand. It gets stronger each time. So he's going to be trying to either Dracula that out or whatever. But... Um, here, I have the option of just passing and then infinoting, or I can go ahead, more likely do the arrow into... There's two ways I can do this. I think I'm going to arrow here. We'll see what he ends up doing. I'm going to snap for sure. And then there's a couple ways I can play that. I can either Odin it, or I can inf uh, Magneto over to the side, depending on where I want the cards to, to fall. A big question is, does he play two cards this turn? He only plays one. Yeah, arrow drags it over here. Um, it's going to be Dracula. That's what I was expecting. So now I can just do Odin here. And if he only plays one card, oh, he has a ha big hand size, six. So he could be playing quite a few cards. Um, I move stuff first. I don't know if that's... Okay. Let me think for a second. I think just the raw output of Magneto is going to be kind of nice. Um... So this is his four, three mana card, this is his four mana card. Magneto can pull Dracula over if he doesn't play there. And even if it is the plus 18, just doing quick math, I'll be at plus 15. It's not 18, I don't know why I said 18. Anyways, let's just do this. I'm not 100% sure if this is the right play, but he played some cards up here. Oh, he just, yeah, flooded. All right, so more... We're seeing a lot of stuff. Middle is probably dead, and that means I'll probably lose. Let's see, Dracula is going to get discarded to Apocalypse, and he's going to get plus 12, so that's a loss. Unfortunately, dropping half the cubes I just earned, but, you know, it's kind of hard to predict exactly how um, much somebody's going to drop on turn 6. So many times it's literally one card, and in this case it's like 6, because this swarm guy um, it has a discount. So... Yeah, it's harder to use this like movement manipulation that Arrow and what's his face uh, Magneto bring if the board's full. The more more full it is, like if he only has one or two cards on each position, you could do so much. And if not, then you're kind of toast. But 
that's when you just bring in the oomph, the raw power. All right, we're gonna jubilee, jubilee into Luke's bar on turn four, so we just have to kind of get there and see what happens. I'll probably snap on turn four regardless of what happens, but we'll see a little bit more just in case there's some insanity. Oh, I can also Magneto into negative zone and it'll pull cards that get debuffed. Oh, this sucks. I, there are ways to destroy locations, but I don't have those any in my deck at all. Um, unfortunate though. I like having Magneto in my hand. I like having Jubilee. Hopefully I get at least one of the two back because um, they both have a lot to offer here. Dropping Magneto in negative zone um, can pull what are kind of like mid-tier cards into a really bad position. Rough. Okay. Um, sure. So, I get one more draw before Chavez. It doesn't strike me as the kind of card that a guy that runs Killmonger, from what I've seen so far. Not that I know too much, but I could go here and try to kind of hold back mana, basically. Interesting. Well, yeah, she has to be played there because she can't reveal on Cosmo, and you don't actually want to get rid of Lizard stuff. Yeah, I think I just pass, and then She-Hulk Arrow. It's not nearly as cool as any of the plays I had come up with before, but should still be pretty effective. Um, let's just snap on six. Usually it's pretty ineffective, but okay. So he gets a guaranteed card to play into Luke's bar, which usually is like impenetrable, with that, with the exception of Jubilee, for example. Um, here, though, what do we really want to do? We want to pull cards in here and hope we win. Like, could be okay if he, if he plays a lot of little stuff. Like, if he plays two cards here, that's actually really good for me. And if he doesn't, then I don't know. We'll mess with it. I don't know that that snaps bad actually. He has, literally has guaranteed left lane, but and we're just fighting for what's left, um, which is usually bad for me. But because I think he wants to play into Lizard, I think he'll play two on the right. They get turfed over to mid. Negative power times two means that he's getting a a disadvantage. Just one card on the right. It's not as good for me. It's Magneto. It doesn't pull anything. I pull him, and uh, we're down two. Yeah, bad snap. Very bad snap. But that's kind of like hindsight stuff. Um, I really wish I could have magnetoed into negative zone. I'm surprised he didn't. Uh, I guess I didn't have anything to pull, but yeah. Yeah, it really comes down to that third location that got revealed that shuffled my deck after turn three because my cool play was on turn four and turn six and that all got taken away. Yeah, but I mean the, the game flow. It's kind of addictive because the game flow is like so quick. Like you're in and out. Even the longer, like more grindy games, still kind of feel like they're only just a, a few minutes. So you kind of get trapped into just kind of queuing more, which is not necessarily a bad thing if you enjoy it. But then you get people like this guy who can't even play turn one. So this is cool. Um, this doubles the impact of most of your cards by playing here, you will get it randomly at one of these two locations. Uh, the trick to it though is you only have four spots to play into, so you want to play usually on turns three, four, five, six, um, because that's you know you're going to play the highest impact cards at those points. But Sunspot is a great exception to that. Um, I think he just didn't. He's just signaling that he didn't hit end turn by accident, um, and that that was like a mistake. Um, yeah, it sucks not to have any cards right now, but. We'll see what happens. Hmm. So that's kind of weird, because like if I play Jubilee, for example, into Sinister London and she goes to nowhere, she's just a random one damage card. She doesn't do anything. Um, 
Conversely, I could like wave here and not have to worry about the secondary effect and still kind of do my jubilee thing. I don't know. If I'm if I'm passing next turn, I want two sunspots on the field. Or not passing next turn, but passing on turn five, I want to get that like basically plus ten damage out of having two sunspots in play. In the meantime, he gets to put a really strong card with a negative reveal and just ignore that because of nowhere. Alright, so I've only got five cards in my deck. Chavez, um, Psylocke, Lizard, and Magneto. That's obviously not five cards, but that's what I can come up with at the moment. Um, the question is, do I just play it here? Because half the time it's going to go here. The double is going to go here anyways and do nothing. And also, I kind of want She-Hulk. a spot for She-Hulk and Infinite on the left. So, yeah, we'll just play here. Also, like, if it pulls Psylocke here, well, I guess it literally can't, but... Yeah, I'm not, not liking how this game's going. If he snaps, I leave. Like, he's got enough of an advantage just from literally these two cards that I'm not really comfortable with what's going on. I could pull use Arrow and Odin to pull stuff out of Sinister London. He's got a completely empty board here, so movement control is kind of nice. But you have the... He's already leading here, so it's really just not accomplishing too much. Um, so we just wave here. We wave and play anything but Infinite, I think, is the play. Um, and that means we're going to play it here. So this, again, gives two mana discount. So, okay, it's going to go Sinister to London. I'm fine with that. Not a big deal either way. Three damage somewhere. Oh, she doesn't get the double up. That kind of sucks. Either way, I'm playing two cards, so I don't even know why I didn't play her on left. Alrighty, so he's got two arrows out here. I've got She-Hulk plus one. I could pull Maximus out of into like this position, which might be bad for me. Like if, if Magneto reflects here. So the second one plays second. Um, and by that obvious statement, I mean uh, the copy, Sinister Lone copy is where it's actually going to pull unless he's here and doesn't reveal or doesn't have the reveal effect. Um, and it's actually really fun if Sinister London and the kill anything that moves here thing comes into play because you can arrow it pulls them into London and then pulls them out um, stuff like that's kind of tricky I don't know this is a lot of damage like just dropping 22 damage on the board I feel like I'm at a pretty big disadvantage but I don't mind just playing it out see what happens Odin shows up activates arrow again that means because he goes first I lose um, if I went first this would have no impact at all um, I would still get my copies but as it stands he cut, just stopped me from cloning two cards, which obviously will just completely destroy me. I'm surprised he didn't snap. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't feel good about it, but like, I don't. I think it's worth the risk of putting in 22 damage. And, oh, I guess double that. So 44 damage on the board in one turn. Feels like a pretty good uh, river, but. Not enough in this case. So, easy lizard. I don't know. I don't really know how to just explain my justification here, other than I think more people play middle than right. People shy away from this right location and are compelled to play here because it's like, oh, this is going to reveal next turn. I want to put something there in case it's something worth playing at. But in this case, it's the opposite. Super flow, you don't want to play cards there. I'm getting free mana. He's not. And now I can do so much random stuff um, with this extra mana that I'm getting this game. Uh, we're gonna pass in this case, but yeah. Like, I don't even have to play Psylocke this game at all. I could've played her there for one damage, I guess, but, um... Raptors. Okay, um... Hmm. Can I get She-Hulk cheaper, I guess, is the question. Am I gonna be passing it all this turn, or do I just wanna play, like, a five... No, I can play Spagnito and Odin on this, on five and six now, because of the super flow. So we'll play this out, we'll snap it. We're feeling pretty good. There's obviously lots of ways that we can get screwed up here. He's playing a discard deck. He might get lucky in a lot of different ways, but just the mana advantage alone, I wanna, like if he's just gonna retreat later anyways, I wanna kinda lock him into the game. So he gets a big discard discard on the Infinite, highest damage card in the game. Um, and so, oh, we're filling this board up pretty quick. Like I can't Odin this. Huh. Maybe I'll pull Infinite, though. 
And that would be very worth it if that's the case. It's Infinite Chavez is like two fifths of the possibilities. He gets hella discarded, so he needs to play Ghost Rider. And he needs Ghost Rider hit Hella as well, which is kind of random. So yeah, I get Chavez. Some good damage coming out. I could pass this turn and get Infinite next turn, but I don't have um, Sunspot down, so I'm not getting any really extra value from the, the mana I didn't spend. So I could just as easily, like, Magneto here. He goes first, so I can't stop, like, an Odin play. But he's not getting the mana for Odin, so... I don't know what this all means. I'm just going to play. I want to play here. Fill up his board. Yeah, I want to fill up his board, so we'll do that. And then we... Draw some random cards soon. Okay, so yeah, we pulled Jubilee over here. Guaranteed win on right board. Means I can focus everything on left, which is really nice. And he's gone. So he ends up retreating before turn six, and I get those. I'm glad that I snap on like turn three, because you know he's just gonna run away. It, these when once you have like a clear disadvantage, you just need to leave, which is perfectly fine. It just means I want to try to pressure him before he gets there. Rock. That's useless. I don't think there's any reason I want to interact with Rock in a positive way anyways. Like, there's nothing I can do to buff it, or... Literally, unless he's playing Lizard, there's no reason I want that card in play. Yeah, we'll just go Lizard in the Fog. Pretty standard stuff. Oftentimes, you'll see enemies play into the places they know. They're, like, afraid of the enemy they don't know, so they just play into the places here. But there's no real advantage of playing here. It just... It could be Jotunheim. It could be Bar with no name, so people get scared of it. Um, I'm down with just, yeah, Wave. I don't really have a lot of plays right now. It kind of feels bad. This Subterranea is one of two things that injects rocks into... Well, it's one of four different things that injects rocks into your deck. And that means you just don't get all your cool stuff. Like, he's going to Lockjaw, and it's going to pull rocks. And it just kind of sucks. Okay, so he has Kingpin. This is interesting. I like this. I like this a lot. So what I'm going to do... I'm playing first as well. Oh, boy. He's going to drop a rock here on Subterranea, expecting Lockjaw to eat it and give him something cool. But Lockjaw's not even there, man. Magneto's already pulled him into the throne room. So Lockjaw and Kingpin are going to the throne room. This card is not going anywhere. Probably a rock. Eh. He didn't snap for a rock, so it's a reveal effect. Leader, okay. So he gets a Magneto, he pulls my wave. We're both getting the throne room buff. But it just, it, it creates a very interesting situation. I kind of like that I'm losing here a little bit, because I get to arrow at the end of the game, and almost auto win. Um, is there anything else I want to do here, though? I'll just tie over here, or do I just want to force the... Yeah, okay, so I just want to push my advantage. So I'm going to play here. Hopefully he doesn't fill it up. Great. Oh, Jubilee's going to fill, fill it up pretty quick, actually. But this doesn't matter to me too much. But so the question is, does he get Hella, and what does he get out of Hella? But what I've been play it, building up to for this game is I just want to arrow middle. I've put him in a position where he has to play on the right. He wants to take away Lizard's power. He wants to beat this 13 versus 6. Um, there's a chance he tr just plays the Lockjaw route, though, right? And in that case, I actually want to, like, arrow here. So arrow here in the middle is fun because Kingpin will kill it. If it's not played there. If he plays right or left, Kingpin kills it. But if he just plays in the middle, she's not actually moving him, and it doesn't do that. So the question becomes... Is he getting Hella? And is he doing it via Lockjaw? And I would not be surprised if he did it via Lockjaw. In which case, I don't really, Arrow doesn't really matter. And I probably just retreat? I mean, this is eight, eight cubes. Eight cubes, if he resurrects a bunch of stuff that discarded, I didn't keep full track of like what he got out of it, but it seemed like a, a lot of good stuff. Maybe he pulls a rock, though. You know, you never know. Let's just let's play it out. See what happens. He did play here, so arrow would have been useless. He does get the hella out, as well as all these zero cost swarms, which get lockjawed. 
she already activated though, right? Okay, he gets literally Lux into, like, I guess it's not that lucky, but... Yeah, he gets plus one. I lose eight cubes. There's a reason I, I feel hesitant about that. I need to realize I'm rolling the dice. It's not even, like, a bad, because it could go either way, but I think I was definitely unfavored there. I probably have, like, a one in three chance of winning, and realistically to stay in something that's escalating, I think it was going from two cubes to eight, maybe it's four to eight, um, I need to be, maybe play a little more cautiously. Cut my losses. Man, I was planning only playing a few of these games, but you just, it's so hard to, to quit when you just got the ball rolling. I don't even have to be winning to feel good about playing these games, just because, I don't know, it's stimulating mentally. But, um, yeah, this negates for me entirely, and I just usually want to pair it up with Sunspot no matter what. Okay, so he can't destroy Hood, even though he wanted to, which means he has negative two from the field. And I kind of like Adelan here because it sets me up to have a reroll on the cards that I haven't gotten a chance to see, which is Infina and She-Hulk. Um, question really becomes, do we want to wave it? And I think we do. So, yeah, I, I'm not really scared of like the big cards that a destroy deck can bring. Um, death is not discounted enough for it to really matter. And, you know, if he's playing a Carnage over here or something, then he's not really getting value out of the wave. I could even, in theory, do this just to be annoying. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, but it's functional. It just limits him from playing the cards in hand. And I think that's kind of what I want right now. And then I'll just pass on turn 5 and play She-Hulk plus something else. I'm going to go ahead and snap. I've, like, I'm not going to guaranteed win this game or anything, but I've already kind of gotten some leverage enough that I feel confident. Could easily turn on set here in a second, because he's playing 6 mana cards. But let's see what he's got. Arrow. Okay, down with that. Don't really change anything for me. And now he doesn't really have anything else. So clearly, if he's playing Arrow in that situation, I don't think he's really got anything going for him. Um, wave plus Dream Dimension equals everything. All right, so if I want to play Magneto this game, I'm going to do it now. Because She-Hulk plus Magneto don't work in terms of cost at this point. But if I want Sunspot to be stronger and to play She-Hulk plus... Arrow, or no, Chavez is going to be coming out. So yeah, let's just play Magneto. He's a lot of damage. It's it's cool. And where do we want it? If this gets destroyed, Carnage. This is actually like his right side is actually pretty. His left side is actually pretty strong. This if this gets destroyed, because um, this guy turns into like six damage. He just drops the She Hulk. No big deal. And now I'm feeling like doing the same. Does mean that I could just lose middle though. So what could he be playing here? If he plays Deathlock, it's five damage plus six is eleven. So if I he, if he plays Deathlock, She Hulk loses. He's this is the first time that he's actually been able to play the cards he wants to, because this I I waved twice. So I have to be wary of him just swarming the board with a bunch of stuff. Kind of a tough call. I can't really feel confident just doing like a lizard and then let Sunspot eat the, the mana, but there's a chance that's the optimal play. It's hard, really hard to evaluate just based off that. It really comes down to if he plays like three stuff here, but I think he's going to play at least one or two things here. Like a, let's say he does like Nova Deathlock. He's already pretty far behind. I'm going to try it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get 4 mana in middle. That means, or 4 damage in middle. That means it's 16 versus 6. I'm up by 10. Oh, he did play 2 and right. It's not going to eat lizard, but I also don't get the damage buff I wanted. So like if I She-Hulk on the left, I lost left. And instead, of, this worked out. You know, I didn't need the damage in middle, it turns out. But like, I got this lizard bumped me just enough above the threshold of danger that when he started swarming stuff it actually didn't really matter I knew he wanted to kill Bucky that's just like natural for his deck and he's not going to do anything in middle with armor 
Um, but, you know, it was kind of a just-in-case measure to make sure the Sunspot had the extra mana. And, like, what's the difference between playing 10 damage here and splitting it four, plus 4 here and plus 5 here? It's just, like, one damage difference overall, and it kind of hedges the bets where I felt like he wasn't just, like, going to drop 12 damage on one lane. All right, let's call it last game. Win or lose. Had some good ones. Had some bad ones. No big deal. Uh, I think we're almost net even in terms of cubes, but DT rush. Classy. Ah, <sighs> two damage, two mana, probably not going to spend it. Yeah, nothing here. Sometimes you get dead draws. I mean, you're literally just sitting around waiting. If you get a sunspot, dead draws are kind of nice because you just pass turn two, turn three, whatever. But here it's like, I'm not getting anything. I'm not, I'm, I feel like it, I'm wasting my, my turns. That being said, there's, it's not uncommon. These, this guy hasn't played anything yet. So. Okay, no armor effect. It's a visual bug, but ongoing defects are disabled here, so cards can be destroyed at that location. Not that it really matters too much. So we can just, like, Jubilee middle, and then hope it hits... I mean, there's a lot of what-ifs here. I, I still don't know what I'm doing for the next rest of the game. Electro. So... Oftentimes you'll see like an Enchantress or something try to silence this guy so that he can play more than one card, but right now he can only play one card per turn. Um, yeah, we'll try to hit a Jubilee plus She-Hulk, and if we don't, that's cool. We'll hit a Chavez, Lizard. Um, yeah, I, I'll either pull She-Hulk or I'll pull Psylocke, most likely. Chavez and Lizard aren't bad, necessarily. All day. All day, Lizard. Whatever. This is scary, though. So what he's going to be doing is he's going to be playing a very big card. I want to bring it over here to make it pretty useless. Um, and then I'll probably do that again with Odin. Yeah, I'm going to snap this. I'm going to... So he's going to be playing uh, Red Skull, most likely. Um, there's a few. Like, Black Panther, I think, costs six. I forget. But either way, um, it might be five drop. Either way, Arrow's going to bring it over here, so I don't really care. So this is probably Red Skull. Um, no, Black Panther. And now he can either RNG out this guy. I, what is his name? He's like the zero damage card called Ad Artem Vernum or something or whatever. I don't care. Um, or he can lose. So either he gets that exact card or drops that exact card or he loses. So let's see what happens. Oh, no. So it, it's not even just that he has to play that card. He has to hit Black Panther. If it hits the other two, it's just bad. Yeah, Artem Zola hits Electro. So Black Panther stays here, Electro goes over there and does nothing. So he had like a 1 in 3 chance of that play working, and if it works, he gets 32 damage. But it didn't. So basically, Arrow, Odin just gets to troll people that when you know what their game plan is. And clearly, if he's playing Shuri, he's just going to buff like a 15 damage card. So it's going to be either Black Panther or uh, Red Skull. And then usually you'll have a, t a card called Taskmaster come out right after that. Um, and because of this Arnim Zola thing, uh, it doubles the double. So he every time he reveals, it doubles his card power. So sure, he doubles his power. He starts at 8. He's at 16. And then if... Wait, no. He starts at 4. Sure, he doubles his power. And then his own reveal effect doubled it to 16. And then Arnim can then reveal him again to make it 32. Which can be pretty unstoppable. That said, it's a 1 in 3 chance. He could he hit sure He could hit... Panther, Shuri, or Electro, and neither one of these would be able to get past armor, so I was happy with that. Good four cubes to end the night, and that puts us back up to 108.2, which is roughly where we were at the beginning, but, you know, just some good, nice experience and uh, some reactive plays. All right, uh, thanks for watching. Have a good night.